Great, thanks very much, John. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Firstly, like Virgil, I think it's fantastic how Nuff's doing this work, and I really appreciate it. Um, we needed someone in the sector to get hold of feedback uh, and mm -hmm. with act, working with others mm -hmm. and help us move it on a step. What you're, it's great what you're doing. So I wanted to pick up on the conversation, mm -hmm. and um, I thought a good entry point would be when Francesca is saying formal is not always better. And I want to ask, well, better mm -hmm. for what? And I want to come at that from a slightly different perspective. Mm -hmm. So here's something, as they say, completely different. Let me see if it works. I have, um, don't worry, it's not that much fun, I'm sorry, it's not that comic. <laughs> I've got, uh, in plan, I've got the questionable honour of sitting on a number of committees and so forth, you can imagine. So I sit on the Programme Operations Leadership Team. Well, we acronym, uh, we make everything into an acronym, so that's PALT. PALT meets about once a month, and we meet with the regional directors, and the idea is that we make decisions um, about how Plan International manage its programs and operations. And that's quite a big deal. There's, there's a lot of, uh, collectively, it's about 500 million pounds in 50 different countries and so on and so forth. When I was preparing for this talk uh, just a few days ago, I was preparing a paper for Pult. Here it is. There you go. And this, you'll see the meeting's 28th of May. I, I've just submitted this. You'll be glad to know, on time, we, a day or two ago. <laughs> Uh, more acronyms. The topic is CO KPIs for FY15. <laughs> it's, a, it's a thriller. I told you you'd enjoy yeah, this. Really. This may not be what you expected to get on yeah. a, uh, a meeting on feedback systems and dialogue and participation, <laughs> some opaque management speak. This is the context we're working in. So you can all interpret that. CO is country office, KPI, K key performance indicator. These are the, we're having a discussion about the key performance indicators mm -hmm. that 50 country offices will report quarterly to their regional directors. Mm -hmm. This is shaping what country directors worry about. Mm -hmm. So, there's a lot of blurb in here. And I don't know, can you read? Yeah. Can you read this? So it's in a series of, I can't read it very, oh, I can read this one better. It's in a series of different sections. There's different colours because I thought that might help my colleagues sort of see what are we saying, are we going to review, what are we going to keep the same? The first few are about programs. You'll see how thin they are. And I don't think that that's a surprise because we know all big NGOs have <coughs> difficulty finding systematic measures of program quality. Uh, is there an approved country strategic plan, CSP? Do we have an evaluation plan? Is there a gender action plan? Well, there's a lot about process here. Have we trained some people in something? Who knows what that is or other things? <laughs> have we implemented our partnership standards? Well, that's getting a little bit further. But that's it for programs. The rest of it, overdue project completion reports, where well, we think this is an important part of our internal bureaucracy. And then a whole lot of stuff about money. How much do you think you're going to spend? How much have you spent? How much is overdue? Well, we're going to get rid of that one. We're going to replace them with these. How much are you spending on what, roughly? How much are you spending on overheads? That comes somewhere else. Are you doing? We, do, we have a lot of sponsorship. And then this stuff is about grants. How much grant money have you brought in? That's what that translates to, against budget. How much money have you raised locally? How many grants are you having difficulties with, we could say, numbers 24 and 25? And that'd be familiar to those of you who are familiar with these things. And then various other aspects of HR. How many women do we have in senior positions? And so on and so forth. Is the child protection policy being complied with? That's the management context. <clears throat> You'll notice that there's not a huge amount on there about what's the quality of your dialogue like with the people you're trying to help, <laughs> or indeed anything else that speaks very much about program quality. This is a problem, and it's not a unique problem for plan. This is a, this is a symptom of a sector-wide problem. And that's what brings me back to the question, formal systems are not always better for what? And I think we need to, to my mind, try to distinguish between two things. One is we could use feedback systems to listen to people as a participatory mechanism. We've got a lot of experience of that as a sector. Um, we were doing it 30 years ago in Sudan. We were doing it 40 or 50 years ago when NGOs were first set up. We're still not doing it systematically or very well. because we're, and we, the, the evidence for that is clear. We're still having events like this. This should raise a question mark in our mind. Why are we not getting better at this? So my second question is, are we using feedback, so firstly I said, are we using feedback systems as a mechanism to listen to the people we're working with, or 
could we use feedback systems as a mechanism to create incentives to listen to people? Which is a point that I think another panel uh, other panelists made. Hard incentives and then cultures of learning and listening that come with that. Well, for my money, the really interesting and exciting stuff is on the second of those. That's the real opportunity with feedback systems, is that we can use them to create management incentives to focus attention on, well, what do the people on the receiving end of this all think? And really, until we get something like that on the list that I've just shown you, we're not going anywhere. And there's no way we can go anywhere in big bureaucracies, which is how a lot of aid money is handled, even if that's not where the work is done. So to my mind, that's the, the primary question, is how do we reform management systems to do some of the things that, that Bergeau and Francesca were saying, create incentives to encourage and reward listening and response. <coughs> now that I find very helpful because that frames, well, how do we approach feedback systems? If the primary goal, we need to do it in the right way, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <coughs> If the primary goal is to generate management data in ways that make recipients' views transparent to senior decision makers, that's a different kettle of fish than is our primary goal to facilitate really high quali quality dialogue on the ground. And don't get me wrong for one second, I'm completely committed to facilitating really high quality dialogue on the ground. I, that, that's fundamental for ethical aid work. Um, but if we don't have the first, then we don't have the second, if I put it in those terms. And we know we've been going around in circles for years. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, I was thinking, in fact, when we're talking, well, I'll come on and say more about use in a moment. And then if we frame the question in these terms, then the idea about closing the feedback loop also come, we can come at that from a slightly different angle. Just before I do that, though, um, let me sidestep into our need for concrete tools. So I think this is a fantastic report. This is a valuable addition to the literature. Uh, and we need to keep moving on. This takes us on a step and we need to keep moving on more steps. What we need to get to is um, concrete tools that staff can use with reasonable co and adapt to local context with reasonable context, uh, confidence that they're going to do a pretty good job in generating credible feedback data. The difficulty we have, we know that talking, effectively we know that talking to people is quite difficult when we come with tons of money and they're in a vulnerable situation. The more marginalised they are, the harder it is. So that takes a lot of resources, it takes a lot of skills, we've got to speak the right language, we've got to be concerned about ethical questions and so on. And surely this is one of the reasons why we haven't made more progress with participatory monitoring over the many years we've been trying to. To help staff move on from that, recognising that country directors are worried about all that other stuff I just mentioned, mm. we need to provide them and their teams with concrete tools. Use this, it works pretty well, it's not perfect, but we don't need to go for something that's absolutely perfect so long as it is ethical. And I would really encourage LNAP to consider that as another step on, and in fact the field as a whole, and I hope that in plan we may be able to contribute to that. Mm. So let mm. me come back to the last point on use. If we take feedback systems, as I set it up at the beginning, then we see feedback systems, well, they're just one part of a wider management system, and of course they are. What we really want to do is reform NGO and aid agency management systems so that they actively reward and encourage responsive programming, rather than, as it might be, static programming. Just do what's in the log frame and get the money and everybody's happy, apart from people who are meant to benefit. That's a problem that's much wider than feedback systems. Mm. And as you were speaking, John, I was just mm. thinking, I was mm. trying to find it online, that there was a great report that Alnap did years ago mm. about using evaluation reports. Mm. And we know that evaluations have the same problem. Mm. We do a lot of evaluations, but not quite so much learning and changing. Mm. And again, I think that's helpful for when we're considering feedback systems. And I would, the implication of that I would take is, I don't think we should expect feedback systems to solve all these deep-seated problems. If we can get feedback systems that generate credible data, that would be good enough for me. That would be fantastic. Mm. 
We need to also tackle the question of encouraging responsive management practice, and that's a very serious matter, but we probably aren't going to be able to do that just through a feedback system. And the huge risk we have is we set ourselves up to fail. And we say, oh, well, you know, we focus just on feedback systems. You know what? It didn't create responsive programming. That's another thing we can forget about, and let's move on. And what a shame that would be. So I think by narrowing the focus a little bit, we actually increase the chance of making a really serious contribution mm. to reforming management systems in the way they've got to go. Mm. Thank you. Alex, thank you very much. Your, your, your management systems and, and, and the questions that you're, you're answering, are they premised on donor reporting requirements or are they your own internal management system or a bit of both? How a bit, how of does both. That bit of both. Like any big NGO, a bit of both. Okay. Do, do we have any donors in the room by any chance? We don't, we d we, but we do online, um, which is very interesting. And um, it's a gentleman called Andy Wheatley from DFID, who's the humanitarian advisor for monitoring and results. And Andy, you, I know that you've asked us a question, and I'm, I'm going to ask that in a minute, but it might be interesting for you also to consider um, what responsibilities a donor may have to ensure that the reporting requirements that you're asking for for agencies actually do reflect the incentives for agencies to dialogue and get better information and uh, communication with, with, the, with their affected populations. Is that, is that a fair point? That. Please do. So I, I think that's a great point. Um, and I think we have an equal responsibility with mm. donors, speaking as yeah. a representative of a big NGO. Mm. We have the same problem internally. Mm. And we need to work with donors. We need to work with all stakeholders mm. and understand where they're coming from. So how can we meet your needs in a way that actively supports and encourages this kind of dialogue. Mm. So I look forward to working with donors on that. And I think there are some tremendously um, exciting initiatives around. Mm. So this work on feedback systems, it's great to see David here from Keystone mm. looking at quantifying mm. feedback data. Mm. We know that all the moves towards enhancing transparency play a very important role. Simple mechanisms like annual participatory reviews that are premised on the expectation that activities and budgets will change rather than will stay the same mm. play a very important role. Okay.